another episode of Farm Your Yard. I'm Carrie. thanks for joining us today. And I'm hanging out in our greenhouse at Columbia's Agriculture Park, and everything is just beautiful in here. It's getting to be middle of the springtime, and everything's just popping and ready to be transplanted outside. So I think I'm gonna take some kale from this tray right in front of me, take out some of these four plants, take my handy trowel, and go to the garden and start transplanting. about gardening is it has given me some pretty good characteristic traits that have helped me develop over the time I've spent gardening. Uh, the thing that I'm maybe most proud of is I've learned patience and the art of waiting through my hobby of gardening. You know if you plant a seed in the ground it can take a couple weeks for that seed to germinate. And then after it germinates, it could be months more before you can harvest that plant and put it on your dinner table. So it really does take a long time and there's relatively little instant gratification in gardening. Now, there is one garden task that is a lot of instant gratification and that is transplanting. The act of putting little baby plants directly into your garden. Today in this video, we'll go over correct ways to transplant young fruit and vegetable plants into your garden and how to care for them after you've transplanted them. So let's get going. Before we jump right into transplanting, let's kind of take a step back and talk about how you plant your garden in general. So there's kind of two different ways you can go about it. The first way is called direct seeding, and that's where you put a seed directly into the garden in the spot where it will grow its entire life. The other way is called transplanting, where you put little plants that are grown somewhere else, like inside in your living room, under some grow lights and on a heat pad, or maybe in a greenhouse, like a commercial greenhouse somewhere. And then you take that plant from the indoor location and plant it as a young plant outside in the garden. There are some plants that prefer one way to the other way. So let's go over those really quickly uh, because you don't want to direct seed some things that like to be transplanted, you won't have success and vice versa. So we just wanna set you up for success. There are some plants like the flower, uh, the edible flower called nasturtiums and carrots that do not like to be transplanted because once they start growing, they don't like their roots disturbed, uh, which is an inevitable detail when you transplant plants. Now, there are other plants like leaf lettuce, like arugula, like cilantro that are all fairly small plants, you know, maybe yay tall, uh, that grow pretty quickly. Uh, and so you don't really need to start them indoors and transplant them outside because they're so tiny. So many plants spend such a small space and their lifespan is so short. You don't really need to transplant them. Now, on the other hand, there are some fruits and vegetables that really require being grown indoors and then being brought out as young plants um, and planted outdoors through transplanting. Broccoli and cauliflower like a long, cool spring, which we don't really have here in Missouri. It's like spring and then boom, summer. So by starting them indoors, you kind of trick them into thinking they have a longer spring than they actually do. And then as far as tomatoes and peppers go, they just need months and months to spend time developing their root systems and their leaves before they're ready to put flowers out and then make fruit with those flowers. So then there's a third category of plants. Um, plants that you know you can direct seed or that you can transplant and they can kind of go either way. Something that falls into that category is our friend kale right here. Also things in that category are like okra, uh, cucumbers, and summer squash. Um, you can have success going either way. Uh, you just have to be really on top of it if you choose to transplant some of these bigger things. For your convenience, and because we like you so much, we put a list of the crops that we choose to direct seed and the ones that we choose to transplant in the description of this video so that you can peruse that and kind of copy it in your garden if you choose to. Now that we've kind of got this broader understanding about, you know, planting in general in your garden, we're going to focus the rest of this video on transplanting itself. Firstly, where do you get the plants? So there's a couple of different ways you can get the plants. One, you could grow them inside in your own house. Uh, you'll need heat mats and uh, lights 
to do this really successfully. Um, but it is a really fun early spring um, hobby to pick up. If you're not ready to deep dive into starting your own seeds in your own house, that's totally cool. You can also purchase them from like garden centers or plant nurseries around town. You know, there's so many plant nurseries that, that um, are full to brimming with plants in the spring that you can purchase plants from. If you choose to purchase your plants at uh, a garden center or a hardware store, there are a couple things you want to kind of like keep an eye out for in choosing really healthy, high quality transplants to bring home to your garden. Here, I have a couple of examples. So if I were at a garden center, I would choose these four plants over these four plants. Now, why do they look different to me? Well, these are a little shorter and they're more compact. They're not shorter in the fact that they're younger, they're shorter in the fact that they are a little more squat and a little sturdier, which is what we want when we plant them in the gardens. I also like these ones more because they're darker green than these ones. Some of these leaves are turning kind of yellowish, kind of like bronze. Uh, that indicates that there is maybe the beginnings of a nutrient deficiency um, and maybe some stress that the plant's going through. These leaves are nice and firm, they're not wilty. Uh, these aren't wilty either, but you wanna make sure not to pick up any plants that are wilting at a nursery. Also, nice full leaves that aren't chewed up by insects. And as a last point, you wanna make sure there are no insects on your plants. So you wanna kind of look at them, make sure there's no aphids no like caterpillars or anything and just make sure they're nice healthy sturdy little plants so regardless of how you got your plants whether you started them in your house or if you bought them from a local nursery it's a really good idea to do something called hardening off before you plant them in your garden so hardening off is when you keep the plants in their little pots or their tray that they come in and leave them outside in the garden not planted for about five to seven days. Living inside is a little bit of an easier life than living outside in your garden. So you wanna give the plant that time to kind of like toughen up before you just, you know, dump it in your garden. While transplanting for us is like super fun and super rewarding, it's pretty traumatic for the plants. Cause like, think about it. You're, you're taking them out of their little home that they've been in their entire life probably, um, or at least most of their life and then putting them pretty quickly into a new home. And it just is a lot of stress on the young plants. So choosing when and on what day you plant them is really important. So like a cloudy day like today is great because the sun's not super intense. In the evening time, great also. Or in the really like early in the morning before the sun gets pretty strong is great as well. You just wanna try not to do it like in the middle of a really hot or windy day. Today's a pretty great day, honestly, to be planting kale out in our garden. So the first thing I wanna do is um, get my little kale blocks out of their little plastic cells. So how I'm gonna do that is I kind of weave my hands through the plants, kind of like so. And then I turn the container upside down and I'm just gonna focus on one cell at a time. So I'm gonna focus on getting this kale plant out of this cell first. And how I do that is by kind of squeezing the sides of the little plastic container. That loosens up the, the roots of the plant from the side of the plastic. So as you, sometimes they fall out. So anyway, it looks okay. It's a nice sturdy plant. So as you see, I was able to kind of squeeze this guy out of the container and has really nice white roots. White means they're nice and healthy. Sometimes you see brown or like yellow roots and that means sometimes that they're starting to like kind of rot because they're a little too wet or they need to breathe a little bit more. I'm gonna kind of gently squeeze all of the sides of this cube and that does kind of like tear or tease apart the roots a little bit because we want to start encouraging the roots to grow out this way and not continuing to grow in like a kind of a circle like they have been. So just kind of slightly, you know, teasing these roots apart. You don't have to do much more than this. So it's still, as you can see, pretty much still in a block shape, but it's a little looser than what it was. Another thing I like to do before I transplant 
is try to pull off any yellow leaves. So these lower leaves are a little bit yellow. So I'm just gonna pinch them off with my fingernails right at the stem of the plant. So now we are ready to transplant. This is about four feet uh, long. I can plant one kale plant per foot. So I'll plant four kale plants right here. So, so where my trowel comes in, I'm gonna dig a hole that's a little bit deeper than this cube so that I can backfill it and, and entirely cover the cube with the garden soil. So I'm gonna set this aside for now and dig my first hole. That's good, I think, we'll see. So when you transplant, you usually like to fertilize if you can, because like I said, it's a pretty traumatic event for the plant. Fertilizing helps it kind of like get over it a little faster. So this is something that you can buy at a local garden center or hardware store pretty easily. It is certified organic. It's got like feather meal and blood meal and some mined minerals in it. Or if you're like a super duper gardener, you could use your aerated worm tea that we've done in another video and add some of that to this and your plants will love it. I'm just gonna take a little, like a little bit goes a long way, a little sprinkle of this dry fertilizer, sprinkle it into the hole. And then I'm gonna plant my plant right into that hole, which I did not dig deep enough, but I'll do so with my hand. And there goes the little plant in the hole. And now I'm gonna take these leaves and kind of move them off to the side with my hand. And I'm gonna put the garden soil all the way around the plant, covering the top of the block fully with the garden soil and then kind of gently but firmly pressing down around the kale plant. I like to plant my plants in a shallow like dish so that when you water, the water pools just slightly around the plant, uh, which makes your job a little bit easier in the summertime when it's hot. Alrighty, so I've got all four of our kale plants planted, fertilized. The kale plants are in shallow uh, dishes so that the water can collect, which brings me to my next point is after you transplant, since it's really stressful in the plants, it's really important, even on cloudy, cool days like today, to water right away. There is a right and wrong way to water, and a wrong way to water at this moment is just to like blast the plant itself with a pretty cold, intense stream of water. So be gentle with it. So what I'm gonna do is kind of get the hose right next to the soil, and maybe, maybe try not to go full forest right away. And I'm kind of just watering like in circles around the plant. So it's still getting some water dripped on it, but it's not like receiving an intense stream of water. So I'll do a few circles and then I'll move on to the next plant. Alrighty. So I've watered each plant just a little bit. And now what we want to do is let the water percolate into the garden soil just a little bit. Like I can hear it moving through the soil right now. We want to wait just a few seconds and then I'm going to test the soil to see if it's moist enough. So let's just wait here. Chill out for one second. Okay, I can't hear it anymore. So let's just see what's going on. So I take your finger and then you want to put your finger in the soil just right next to the plant. So I go down to about my middle knuckle and you can see that there is mud on my finger all the way to my middle knuckle. So that means, mud means the soil is wet, uh, so that means it's wet all the way down to the bottom of that root ball, which is pretty good. That's what I want. And so I'm going to try to fill this uh, hole that I just made my finger back in. And I am confident that the soil is moist enough. So now that I've tested my soil and made sure it's wet enough for the plants, that's how I'm gonna actually check it to see if it needs to be watered when I come out on a daily basis for the next few weeks to make sure my plants are still transitioning to their new home well. I'm gonna go out, say hey to them, stick my finger around a couple of them and see if it's damp to my, the tip of my finger when I push it into the middle knuckle. And if it is still damp down there, that's good. Uh, it really depends on environmental conditions, how often you need to water. On damp, cool, cloudy days like today, I probably could, 
I, I probably would be able to skip that day. But if it's like super sunny and windy, that's when the water is going to move out of the soil a little faster and you need to water more. So through careful observation and just checking on your plants every day, you'll be able to tell if and when they need to be watered. And voila, you have nice row of transplanted vegetables in your garden that you'll just watch every single day and check on and water as needed until they're nice and big and more established in your garden. As always, we hope that this content was super helpful for you. Also, check out the description below where we link other videos we've done that kind of relate to this content, like how to start seeds in your house, how to direct seed into your garden, and also that list of plants that we choose to direct seed or transplant in our gardens around Columbia. As always, let us know if you have any questions and we'd love to keep the conversation going with you. All right, well, I'll see you next time. Bye. Is that clear? My hand's so dirty. I don't even know, can you tell? <laughs> I could, oh, let me rinse my hand off. Oh my God, yeah. <laughs>